girl. <laughs> hey guys, so anyways, this is how it's gonna go. We are so excited to bring you this new series called School Days. Now we have one of my favorite creator friends, <laughs> Small Crazy, whose real name is Yashin, but um, she is incredible. So we're going to jump right into this. Basically how it works is that I'll, we'll just be talking a little bit about her process and you guys in the comments below, feel free to ask questions and Yashin will come back over and she'll definitely answer those questions. But we will also get the chance to see her live behind the scenes of how she takes that creative process and takes that into her work. So if you're not familiar with Small Crazy, then you need to be because her work <laughs> is incredible. I'm telling you guys. So Sometimes. like vibrant, <laughs> it is, it really is. It's like all the time, all the time, 100%. It is vibrant, it's colorful, and it's fun. And as soon as you see her work, you know, you just feel like you know exactly what her personality is like. And when you do meet her in person, which, you know, I've had an opportunity to do several times, you realize that it's 100% who she is. Like, it's just, it's just so real. And I love that about her. So, Yushin, thank you so much for joining us on this um, first kickoff episode of School Days. Oh, is mine the first episode? Yes, the number one. Oh, wow. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're super excited to have you here. And I just feel like it's such a great opportunity for people to learn. You know, here's the really cool thing is that whenever I see your work, I see personality. And I don't always see that in every creator's work that, you know, I'm viewing. I mean, so what is it about that? Like, you know, do you feel like this is something that you discovered right away that you wanted to put your personality, really, really translate your personality, like your likes and your tastes, like for vibrant, bright colors and textures? I mean, or did it just develop? Um, I don't know, I guess nothing. I mean, I can't say that I was born with it because when I was born, I was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like, my love for color started <laughs> when I was in secondary school. I had a best friend called Joyce, and she was very much like me, and she is, still is very much like me. I call her my twin, even though we haven't lived in the same country for uh -oh. many, many, many years. And I think we kind of inspired each other and encouraged each other, and we like brought color into each other's lives. She also loves colored hair. She wears like the most ridiculous outfits. She's really creative. <laughs> And I think we kind of developed that sort of personality together. You know? nice. yeah. 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 And then I think about 10 years ago, maybe, that's when I stopped wearing the color black. I mean, black isn't a hmm. real color, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think over the years, I just became more and more colorful, if I can say that, even though it sounds kind of rid ridiculous. Um, no, no, it doesn't. And, it, and for me, it just comes naturally. You know, like, that's what I'm wearing. Like, I'm not the kind of person who would put on an outfit for a photo. Like, everything you see mm. in my photos, that's what I'm wearing. That's what I'm wearing when I, I'm out that day. Mm. Um, and this is why you'll see me wearing the same thing throughout a few photos, because they were taken on the same day. You know, that's just my outfit. That's just, just my wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that you were born and raised in Malaysia. This is right, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, do you feel like that cultural influences had any um, influence, again, on your work? No. 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 I like that it was just pretty straightforward. You're just like, no, not, not at all. No, growing up and going to school in Malaysia, it was, it was very rigid, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Education there isn't as liberal or flexible as it is in Western society, I would say. You know, it was either you do science, science subjects or like arts and humanities, which basically means accounting or like actual just art, like art theory or something, yeah. economics, those kind of things are like, it's either science or non-science, that's it. Yeah. You know, we didn't really have a lot of extracurricular activities and a lot of music, you know, it right. wasn't really like a creative environment. Yeah. So that makes sense. But you were, you were trained as a scientist, correct? Mm -hmm. and yes. <laughs> that was your career up until quite recently too, or one of your careers, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was working at UCL in London doing yeah. cancer research in a lab. Yeah. Okay, so scientist and influencer, <laughs> photographer, creator, like all of these different, um, yeah, just I guess like different career paths are kind of merged for you. So with your work, um, you know, what are the, like, what are the, where do you want to go with it? 
from here? I mean, you've been out there, you've been working with brands, you've been doing really big brand campaigns. Um, I mean, so what's next for you? Ideally, I would like to be like a director. <laughs> like I want to be a creative strategist. Strategist? Nice. How do you say that word? Oh my God. Strategist. Yeah, strategist. strategist. Yeah, strategist. <laughs> I know, I do the same thing with words. Okay. So yeah, one of those, like I want to come up with the ideas because I feel like I have a lot of ideas Mm -hmm. um that i would need help executing yeah so like i just want to be like the ideas person and have to be able to have a team or sort of to kind of help me nice. bring this into fruition yes you know love that yeah i could see you doing that absolutely <laughs> definitely so i guess in, so in a sense like being that director actually. yeah no i could definitely yeah, see like that. so kind of like a, the creative lead on projects that you kind of oversee even yes. the director, the director of photography, yes. everything. You oversee all of that. Yes. Nice. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I could see that. I could definitely yeah. see you doing that. And so what are you, yeah. what kind of kit are you currently working with as we get closer into your lesson here? Um, in terms of like what you're shooting with currently and um, kit that you love shooting uh, with. Um, we use a mirrorless setup. I've got a mirrorless camera, Ricardo who works on videos, he's using a similar kind of mirrorless camera as well. I'm using a Sony A6500, nice. I think, that yeah. I got two years ago. Still serves me well. Nice. <laughs> and I think it's quite affordable too. We have four different lenses, two prime lenses, two zoom lenses. I personally prefer uh, prime lenses because they're just sharper and crisper. Yeah. But at the same time, they're not very versatile and I hate having to stop and change lenses. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's your favorite? What's your favorite lens to shoot with currently? Um, it's a Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4. <laughs> nice. Well, listen, I want to jump right into your lesson. Um, and I'm hoping everyone got learned a little bit more about you. But if you want to learn more, make sure that you're DMing um, Yashin. She says that she might get back to you or she might not. No, she'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> promising yeah. all these things on my behalf <laughs> i know i know oh my gosh shame on me but uh, definitely dm her if you have any other questions for her about her life her creative process but we want to get right into the, the the kind of like nuts and bolts of everything in terms of yashin's creative process so how does her personality and her brand image translate into her photo editing and that's what you're here for so yashin i'm gonna allow you to share your screen and you're gonna take it away. Okay, so over here I have three photos. Um, the one that's currently in the main frame, that's something that I've already edited, so you can already see the results. It's on my <laughs> Instagram page. I should have pulled it out here, shouldn't I? But because I'm no, so- No, it's okay. No, no, it's fine, it's <laughs> totally fine. Um, so I'm just gonna go through my basic process because I usually take quite a long time to edit one photo. It can well depending like if it's a really bright and well lit photo it might only take me 10 or 15 minutes but sometimes it takes me up to half an hour to get the the look that i am 100 wow. percent happy with so with this one it should be quite simple to me it's quite well lit the color is flat there's no glare there's no direct sunlight anywhere um so the first thing i usually do um is i bring up the exposure like quite a lot it doesn't matter what it looks like now because I know it's going to look better later. <laughs> so the first thing is I bring up the exposure in order to flatten the image. So I bring down the highlights and the whites completely to zero. So as you can see, the image is quite flat. Um, and then I also bring out the shadows, the blacks, just a little bit. And it looks pretty crap right now. And it's going to look even more crap as soon as I do this, which is bring, bring down the contrast. So what you have here is a really flat, low contrast image. Um, and that's because what I'm trying to achieve here is not to have texture uh, through the luminosity or through, the, through light, but rather create texture through the colors. So the colors can be very vivid without it being, you know, looking too crazy or oversaturated, mm -hmm. or contrasty. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. No, that makes sense. <laughs> it totally makes sense. So now I'm going to move, increase the clarity, dehaze just a little bit, maybe a bit of texture. And the most important thing is this one, vibrance. I move it up quite a lot, seeing as the image was quite flat before. And this is how I add texture. As you can see, the image is looking a bit better now. And I can also tell that it's quite yellow. So I'm gonna just bring this down a little bit. Maybe increase this a little bit more. Um, yeah, you can see that it's starting to get more definition. And then now is when I, I guess this can be done at any time that you feel like the Instagram crop 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> so nice. I know. Yeah, and I always make sure to shoot the images with extra room at the top, either at the top or at the bottom, specifically for this crop, which is kind of annoying, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Um the next thing I do is tweak the individual colors. And how I do this is if you click on color, it groups the parameters by color. Yeah. Um, and one thing I always, always change is the yellows because the green side of the yellow tends to give this kind of gaudy, outdated look, you know, and I tend to move this towards the warmer side just a little bit. Mm-hmm. I also mm-hmm. increase the saturation like, like so yeah. sometimes. And depending on like how your photo is lit, I might decrease the luminance just to like give it a deeper, richer color, you know? And yeah, then I also do sense. this with, yeah. I hope this makes sense. I'm just, you know, I'm usually not thinking when I do these things. <laughs> um, and one thing I also use when in situations like this, as you can see, the sky is quite washed out. I mean, it was cloudy. There was, might, might have been some blue there, but you can't really see it right now. So I use, um, what do you call this? A mask, like a gradient mask. Mask, yeah. Yeah. Just pull it down here. As you can see, there's already some effect um, because there's some like preset um, things already here. So what I do is I put it there. Let's reduce the exposure a little bit. So you can see there's more of a sky there. Yeah. I increase the saturation just a little bit. And it already looks better to me anyway. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does. Yeah, and then you can sort of change the shading by tweaking the temperature and the tint, depending on what kind of blue you like your sky to be. And like in this particular photo, you can't really see the mask affecting the buildings, but if it does affect the buildings, you can just, within the same mask, click on brush, go down, click on erase. So this is just going to erase uh, part of the mask uh, so that yeah that makes sense yeah so that kind of get those yeah. tips off the building yeah yeah so you can just select a brush click erase and erase the parts that you don't want it to affect i'm just going to do this really roughly because you can't really honestly see much of an effect <laughs> um that's that that's the sky and this is pretty much like a basic edit I mean, I might spend more time on it. I might just try to give it more definition by sort of tweaking the shadows and the blacks up and down, you know, just to give it more richness, more texture. But I think you can already tell that this looks like my photo. (laughs) Definitely does. Definitely. Yeah, Yeah. the detail, the textures you see really clearly compared to the original image. So, Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Yeah, so <laughs> I hope that helps. Like, no, you definitely do another photo. <laughs> yeah, maybe show us one other example. Okay, that'd be great. This is a photo of me and Ricardo. I just thought That's I would. Fine. Yeah, do something that has like a person more visible. <laughs> definitely. Instead of a building, um, so the same thing: increase the exposure, decrease the highlights and the whites, right to zero, decrease the contrast. You know, you just have to accept that the photo is going to look shit first. <laughs> <laughs> and then I slowly give it definition by using the dehaze and clarity tools, like so, increasing the vibrance. And some, if you see that it gets really, really saturated, you can decontrast it even more. Because this is the look that I like. I like it to look quite flat, sort of yeah. like almost magazine style, mm-hmm. but then retain the richness in the colors. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I know. Yeah. And then I might come down as usual, play with the yellows a little bit. Like, nice. Yeah. Like, so you can do the same thing, crop it for Instagram, something like that. And then you might do the same thing with the sky. In this case, I don't think it's really necessary. I mean, if you really want to give it that bright, sunny look, it's pretty easy to change that whole sky to blue using the same method I right. used before. And you guys are so cute there, too. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. here I'm going to the reds because I feel like I could tweak it a little bit. And totally. as you can see, if I bring down the luminance of the red, it just makes the photo look very much richer. Mm, definitely does. Yeah. Do you create uh, presets for yourself? 
Um, or do you no, just always manually? I always manually, manually um, adjust. Uh, I, I did create a few presets for myself before, like, you know, I have one for like bright sunny days, have one for like shady days, but I ended up not using them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, as you, <laughs> at the end of the day, I feel like the process, like the basic process that I just demonstrated here is quite simple, really. Yeah. <laughs> just about knowing what to adjust. And I feel okay. like every time I apply those presets, I end up going to those same parameters and readjusting anyway. Yeah. So I feel like it works better for me to do it organically from this from zero. That makes sense. Yeah. If you're editing all of the same photos, um, say for like, I don't know, for something more, maybe like a yeah, a, like a shoot. Say for example, like on the same day, I had a shoot with Ricardo or something. I came up with like fifty photos. Then I I might just edit one from scratch and just synchronize across yeah. the whole set. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> no, I mean, so good. maybe I'm not the most efficient. I'm never the most efficient in everything, anything. <laughs> so. But it works for you. It's, it's so yeah. that you feel comfortable and confident about your work process. And you do it really fast. I mean, you did all of these edits. Like you went in and you were like, exposure, contrast, highlights, whites, everything. Yeah. Down. Those are like the you first, know? like the skeleton of my edit. So yeah. I just do it all really fast to get like this look. This is like my my template, I would say, absolutely here, it's here is where I start to really refine it. Definitely. <laughs> to spend a little bit more time. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes details. sense. Yeah. No, that definitely, definitely makes sense. Nice. This is really <laughs> helpful. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm sure everyone that is watching is going to be, you know, taking notes. Let's hope. I don't know if there are studios. Yeah. Either that, I'm going to so be like, oh my God, it was so bad. <laughs> I hardly think that. I hardly think that. I think the biggest thing is, guys, like, go over to Small Crazy's page, Yushin's page, and you can see, like, how beautifully curated her feet is. Like, it's always so consistent. So, and that's just something that really I'm does stand out. I'm glad you think so, because I was like, man, I'm so bad at this consistency game. Oh, and the thing is, I don't like, um, like, feeds that are just so perfect. Like, you know, yeah. you have to have... Variety in the shots. Yeah, there needs to be some mm -hmm. variety. The the color yeah. palette. I love to see color color palette shift. If it's a quite yeah. a curated feed, it's nice to see a shift in colors mm -hmm. instead of like I've seen creators that you know their brand color is like a yellowish gold, mm -hmm. and so every photo it, they yeah. feature yellowish gold, and it's the same color palette, and yeah. it it's quite striking. But also, I don't find that it's for me. That's just yeah. Yeah. what I prefer to do. So it's nice mm -hmm. to see it change up. And I think just because your brand is color, like living life yeah. is color. So anything that's colorful, you tend to feature. So you never go off brand. And that's what's so powerful is that you've been able to translate that into your work. And then it's also been able to secure you, you know, more work. Like, could you give an example of um, how your personality and your style of work um, actually translated into maybe a brand campaign or um, a job? Hmm. Now during coronavirus, not really, but not now. <laughs> maybe the, pre is every. You know what? Let me preface this and say everything is pre corona, right? Oh, <laughs> well, I guess. Well, you know, a lot of brands and companies have come across my uh, Instagram page, and that's how I get most of my job opportunities, mm -hmm. um, whether they involve Instagram or not. But I kind of use Instagram as my portfolio right now. Not really. Um, I'm less interested now in selling my audience on Instagram, like sponsored yeah. posts. And, yeah, I'm trying to shift towards content creation for brands off Instagram mm. um, because yeah. I feel like I get to be more creative uh, in that sense and like take charge of exactly what kind of content I want to create um, and like be able to have more of a part in the ideation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I Definitely. Can, like, suggest ideas to these people um, on what should be in the shoot um well i guess i could talk about that benefit thing <laughs> because um well last year uh i received an email from a lady from benefit cosmetics and she it was because she had seen a video that um ricardo and i had produced uh on one of our personal trips actually to the netherlands we did a nice. video about the tulips it's tulip season now how sad anyway i know yeah and i and what she said was that she could see my like she could derive my personality through like all the photos that she'd seen on my Instagram and she really liked it and she felt like it was really in tune with uh, benefit, you know, how they're so pink Amazing. and they're a bit lighthearted, they're always like fun, like makeup shouldn't be serious, they're a bit different from, you know, traditional makeup brands. 
um, yeah. <laughs> that are like more yeah. serious and like glamorous, sexy. Yes, like, uh, yeah. And yeah. I did think this was a really good fit. So um, they commissioned me and Ricardo to come up with like a whole storyboard and uh, to create a video for them to use as promotional material on across their yeah. platforms. So like we did a one minute video plus a whole set of photos that took us a whole month to create, but wow. it was really fun and really uh, fulfilling. <laughs> That's amazing. Can't wait to see <laughs> the final product. I, I, I feel really strongly about that when brands are working with creators, like find creators who mm -hmm. are extensions of yourself, um, you know, or of your brand. Mm -hmm. And the same thing for creators that are looking to work with brands, like find brands who it's just like, you know, like you, like you, you were looking mm -hmm. at, you know, the storyboard and you're like, it's just so easy. You're putting in yeah. the color palette and you're, yeah. And it was fun, everything. you know, like looking yeah. at the, all these images to illustrate my ideas. It's like, those images are me and it's just so easy to fit them in into what, into their own vision. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. But no, thank you so much for sharing your creative process. This is thanks this for is having me. So Hopefully great. This has been useful, though I can't hey. guarantee. I, <laughs> no, I, I kid you not. Like, what else are all of us doing? Like, we're at home. We're eating. We're watching. We're doing Netflix. We're working out. Some of us I'm playing Animal to, Crossing. Playing Animal Crossing. Going on house party. By and the way, if anyone knows how I can get a hold of a Nintendo Switch Animal Crossing edition, please send me a DM. Because I'm looking for she's, she's on this. Because it's quite expensive. You said the one it's you saw. It's sold out everywhere. Well, okay. So guys, please help a girl out. Like, <laughs> slide into her DMs. Let her know. You know something that she doesn't know. Because your girl's mm. on the lookout. Yeah. So, seriously. No, thank you again. This is really fantastic. And we just want to encourage thank you guys. You. Um, for those that um, feel like you've learned something from this, like, please do take the opportunity to donate. Um, Yushin has partnered with the charity and make sure that you um, just look in the details in the, in the description about this. And then that way that you can, if you feel like you learned anything, any donation makes a big mm -hmm. difference. All of the proceeds, 100% will go to that particular charity. All the charities that all of our creators have brought on board are extremely vetted and well-researched. So if you feel like, you know what, I really did learn something from this and I'm going to put it into my creative process. You have a dollar, you have a euro, you have a pound, whatever it is, or five or 10, like feel free to make sure you put it into the pot and that will then be sent to the charity. And we'll be making announcements of how much that we raised for that as well. So Yay. yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, Again, thank you all so much for joining us on this edition, the first inaugural edition of School Days, where we are learning from some of our favorite creators, creators who are out there slaying the game, but also making a difference in their creative process. So I love that lipstick. That's a great color on you, girl. Lip balm. <laughs> Lip balm. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Can I browse them? No. But um, again, thank you guys for joining us. And thank hope to you. see you thank in you. the next episode. Yes.